It's a lot, it's big, and it just explodes when you put it in your mouth. Well, the best way to make parents feel comfortable is just The ghost had a crush on me. It's a freaking ghost. It's gonna be hard for them to communicate with my partner if they aren't Indian. Speaking of birth control, the thing with Indian kids, I know you, okay? You lie so much to your parents. This week is episode 70, which means you already know. You already know what we're doing. We're going to be answering questions that you asked us. You guys asked all kinds of crazy things, okay? You asked about Indian parents, cheating birth control, ghosts, and so much more. Stick to the very end because we have a special announcement for you. Let's get into this Half Past Crew. <sighs> Welcome to Half Past Ja. Guys, welcome back to another episode of Half Past Jaya. My name is Sake2. My name is Hallie. And if you can't already tell, we are an interracial couple. I'm Indian. I'm like super white. And that's what we talk about. We talk about being an interracial couple. We talk about being in a relationship. But we also get questions from you guys because you guys go to www.halfpastjaya.com and submit your own questions. You also DM us on Instagram at Half Past Jai, which is how we come up with these episodes called Questions of the Week. We release new podcast episodes every Monday at 7 a.m. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, like this video on YouTube. And if you're not on YouTube, make sure you follow us and give us five stars on Spotify or Apple Podcasts because that does a ton for us in the algorithm. Please. Settle in, get cozy, and grab your cha. So, Mr. Patel, the whole point of this episode is questions of the week because we get them from really our DMs, our website, and our reels, and our we always post stuff on our stories and you, people can submit questions. So we appreciate anyone who asked a question. We try and cover a lot of them. With that being said, I have my first question for you. Are you ready? Yes. What is the first question? How did we even meet? How did we meet? Huh. Well, we met in this place called high school. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's a great place. Not always. But it's a great place for us because that's where we met. And I was a senior. Hallie was a junior. And we have a whole video about this. So I'll make sure I link it. But in a synopsis view, Hallie was a, a, a cross-country manager. And I was on the cross-country team. I was like, why is this girl on the team? Like, it doesn't make any sense. She's a girl. She should be on the girls' team. And uh, she I was wasn't. just that good that so I was on the guys' team. I really thought she was training with the guys because she was that good. Yeah. And uh, it ended up being she was just a manager, and that's how I first met her. I went up to her and asked her why she was here. Because you didn't know. Because I didn't know. You were so confused. Just a little background from my side. So the reason I didn't just up and decide one day to manage the guys cross-country team, okay, it wasn't an idea of my own. I had played volleyball, and I played travel ball, so I played basically spring or well i guess winter time through summer mm. and then school ball was always fall time right so i played year-round volleyball i played for seven years so i played for many many not many many years but to me many many years at that point uh in my teenage years so i had played volleyball for a while and the school that i went to uh just to put into perspective was so big and had to be the best at everything that if you didn't it's kind of like the corporate world it's like if you don't climb the corporate ladder like just try and you don't play the game if you don't play the game there we go if you don't play the game per se then you don't make the team and i did not play the game i did not make the team my parents did not pay extra money to get me on the team whatever <laughs> that's neither here nor there <laughs> anyways i got cut from the volleyball team my junior year because the coach had a rule that a junior could not be on jv you had to be on varsity either as a junior or a senior. So, you know, like I obviously spent many years playing volleyball and spent my whole summer trying out and conditioning with the team and all other things. But anyways, so at that point, that had happened like the first week of school that I got cut. And I remember not being too sad about it. It was kind of weird. So it kind of is like a weird way of telling me that it worked out for the best, which obviously it did because we met. But I remember coming home that night and my brother was a runner 
Um, and he was like, hey, like I know you're in good shape. You want to stay in good shape and still do something. It's too late for you to join the cross country team. But do you want to manage? You could, you know, like travel with the team. You could get familiar with the sport and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, I'm sure. I don't know. I literally didn't know anybody. Yeah. And at that time, I didn't have so many of my other friends that were in track and cross country because this is what gave me those friends. <laughs> And so I didn't know anybody. And you were like the first person to come up to me on the like the first day that I was there. I ran by myself and I came back and you came up to me. And you were like, are you that weird girl from track? And so I'm like, great. On my first day here, I'm already getting made fun of and insulted. Great, great, great. And then, yeah, you were super nice after that. And then we after that, it was just easy. We started hanging out a lot of the times. You kicked somebody out of your car so that I could go be, so that I could sit in the front with you as you were taking people to practice because you were a senior so you would drive the younger people you know so yeah that's how we met and then we just continued hanging out and the year age the yeah the year age difference didn't matter um because we had a lot in common so we just kept talking becoming best friends and then fell in love and here we are that's how we met (laughs) that's the uh that's this very nice synopsis of exactly how hallie came to be a cross-country manager and saw me. Yes. And so, you know, everything works out for a reason. So I guess take that as you will. If anything in your life is not working out and at the moment you don't understand why, it's probably for, you're, you're going to be better off. Hallie, have you ever tried to learn Hindi? If so, my boyfriend speaks Gujarati and I'm trying it hard to learn. Okay, so that's one question. Does Hallie understand slash speak Hindi? That's another question. Does Hallie understand Gujarati? That's another question. I just, there's a lot of questions about this, about you speaking Gujarati or Hindi. So what's the answer? I get it. I mean, I think it's something that the people would want to know, right? Like, is there, or am I trying to learn a new language so that I can communicate better with your family? Not necessarily you, because you don't speak. Okay, first off, you don't, you when we watch Bollywood movies, you have to have English subtitles on because you don't know Hindi. No, don't even, don't I even. I know. He, you don't. Okay, if somebody speaks Hindi to me, I will understand what they are saying. Really? Because we, so perfect example. I've been on the couch watching K3G. Okay. Mm. Been watching it. And you'll be in the kitchen and I'll be like, I, I turn the subtitles off for a second. And I'm like, what did that say? And you're like, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. And you like, you don't know. I can't just like say it. I know what it means in my head. Like I, I can, I just know. Like I can't say it out loud. I love, I would love to believe you, but I don't. For the people who <laughs> are like me that understand, but can't translate it. You got my back comment and, and you got, I, I know there's people like me out there. I know, but. You just can't translate, but you understand. Okay. That's fair. But I, t- to that point, I have not tried to learn Hindi because you don't know it. Yeah. And your parents, I mean, like your family doesn't speak Hindi. They speak, they speak Gujarati. Gujarati. Yeah. So, do so you, did you learn how to speak it a little bit here and there? Here and there. I'm going to be honest. So here's my frustration. Okay. I have been learning German for the last few years. And the one place that I go to learn that is Duolingo. Now, Duolingo has quite a few a variety of languages they have hindi they do not have gujarati mm-hmm. it is much harder to find a specific dialect yeah. of a language in t- instead of <laughs> if it's um, not like the top five languages yeah. in the world it's hard to find that language so that's free as well which i'm willing to pay for it or we have rasi kaka who's also a yeah. fantastic teacher but like you know my preferred way of learning i'm really good with duolingo and i've been able to learn german well with that and so it's frustrating that it's i mean i get you know whatever if it's not like the top five languages or whatever top however many languages then i get why it's not on there but i really wish that it was because mm-hmm. that would be so helpful for me um, because a lot of the other things that I found online as well, which I know there are probably YouTube videos that could teach, but I don't know the, the alphabet. Yeah. And a lot of things are in the Gujarati alphabet. Mm, yeah. So that's hard. It is difficult. There's The thing is that you have to find something that has the Gujarati English translation. So like that's very, it's hard to do. It's hard to find. It is, which I think your dad gave me yes. a book. Yes, he did. But, but it doesn't have, the... it's just words it's not i need more so how to form a sentence and the actual structure of those and how do you like instead of just saying like yeah much are which is <laughs> mosquitoes right yeah yes it is, it is. Good see job. like but you know what i mean like i don't just want to point and be like much are like if i see a mosquito i want to be like i see a mosquito does that make sense mm-hmm. 
So it's hard to find something that can give me. We'll what find I want. something out there. Maybe somebody will point us in the right direction. Yeah. If you, yeah. Please. Hallie, there's another question that relates to this. Not really, but yes. Pani Puri. Do you like it? <sighs> don't hate me. I, I know the answer to this. I don't. You don't like it. I, I mean, I'll eat it, but I, when I do eat it, I'm like, I don't get this. Pani puri is the best thing to ever exist. It's so good. Dai puri, another level. It's so, so good. I love dai puri more than anything. And I don't know how Hallie doesn't like it. I get why people like it, but here's what I here's what I will say. Because when you have one, all right, mm-hmm. you put the whole thing in your mouth. <laughs> you got to, because if you don't, then everything's gonna spill out. Well, that's the point. There's too much in there. There's too mm. much going on. So you have it's a big thing. I don't want to say it. Said. It's a big thing you have to put in your mouth. It's cold. You gotta learn. <laughs> no, like, okay, actually, no, that's what I was gonna say. It's a lot and it's cold. Like yes, all the stuff in cold. there is cold. It is, it is which cold. I'm shocked that because you're so picky about liking hot so and cold good. foods. If something's cold, you're like eh, like a cold sandwich, for example. You won't eat a cold sandwich. You have to toast everything <sighs> or even put it in the microwave if you're at work. You put your sandwich in the microwave. Yeah, because it tastes good. But like pani puri, dai puri, like do you get what I mean? Yeah. It's a lot. It's big and it just explodes okay. when you put it in your mouth well, and it's cold. It's cold. And now, for that reason, everything individually in it tastes good, but I don't like it for those reasons. That is Hallie's answer, everybody. Um, <laughs> go hate her in the comments down below. No, uh, please. I love so many other Indian foods. Please. Now we're going to go into the next question, which is about dating a white girl okay? oh here we go i'm gonna list out all the questions that we got that pertain to this question okay <laughs> i'm dating a white girl her parents are not happy how do i start a conversation her That's different. parents are yeah. happy i have a canadian girlfriend how do i convince my gujarati parents hide my name please <laughs> don't worry redacted <laughs> don't worry we'll find you <laughs> how does your name is beep sorry how does <laughs> one go about getting indian parents to accept american partner how did Saketu convince his parents for marriage? How did you deal with relationship problems when he first told his family about you? So many. Guys, this I is- can list 20 questions longer. Like, there's so many questions about this specific topic. It's insane how scared we are of our parents. Everybody's scared of their parents. It Even doesn't the matter white who girl's are. parents are yes. scary, apparently. Yeah, I mean, again... I think anyone is afraid of, I mean, maybe it's just me. I don't know. I have this deep rooted fear of disappointing my parents. I think a lot of people do. Maybe some people don't. Maybe you don't care. I don't know. It's really hard for me not being a people pleaser and caring about what people think, especially the people closest to me that obviously my parents brought me into this world. I don't want to disappoint them or hurt them or, you know what I mean? So I think it's fair game. Anybody can disappoint their parents, especially something as sensitive as having a romantic partner, a life partner. They are going to, I mean, especially when you're younger, parents tend to have a lot of input on that. Why do you think, they're picky. why do you think parents, why do you think parents have so much say in who we're with? Mm. Especially on the Indian side of things. Like, why do they care so much? Do you think? Well, I should be asking you that. But I want you to like, I don't know. You don't know. I mean, I don't know. Well, again, like. We've talked about this many, many times, but your parents literally brought you here. I was born in the U.S., okay? Yeah. But your parents immigrated from India mm. to bring you and your family here for a better education, for good jobs, to have a good life. Yeah. And, I mean, it was always kind of culturally understood or just understood in general that you'd be with somebody within your race yeah, or within your culture. I think for them, the reason that this happens is because it's it's going to be hard for them to communicate with my partner if they aren't Indian. That's something that I've seen a lot of Indian parents like, like make sure that they know their kids know. And then they get scared because they're like, oh, they're not going to get accepted. They're not going to be liked. And the biggest fear is when you put your partner in that kind of situation, like you are putting them in a place that is scary for them. They're going to be like ridiculed and things are going to be said about them that they're not going to be very nice. It just happens in not just Indians, but like parents are really good at 
saying wrong things to their kids. Yes, they are. Parents very are bad. Good at getting inside their kids' heads. And so it's very manipulative. Like that, that happens a lot. I mean, a lot of parents, as much as they don't want to admit it, they are very manipulative and they want their way. And that's what makes them so scary because you're afraid to disappoint or you're afraid to skew off their line of success. But they're coming from a place of love. Do you think they have malintent behind mm. it? They like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh okay. Parents well, I was going to say maybe have not. <laughs> a direction so. that they want their kids to go in because they love them though. Do you be- think it's because oh I don't want them to be happy? No, it's because they want a certain thing. Really? No, I think they love us. <laughs> but I do think there is some kind of there's something else back there. They're like their past also like has a lot to do with the decisions they make, right? Well, yeah, think about their, I mean, any parents yeah. or our parents specifically, think about their upbringing, right? You have to, yeah. I heard this on a podcast once, any decision that anybody makes or any way that they decide to behave, you have to think about it from their point of view, from their frame of reference and what they have experienced. I like how I drew that. Mm-hmm. Their frame of reference and how they view life and how they've experienced life. Like, for example... Like your parents weren't super thrilled about me being white. No, I'm just saying yeah. that's that's their frame of reference, right? Yeah. They grew up in India. Their upbringing was so different yeah. than my parents, right? My parents have always lived here and it's majority white people, but it's been a lot more diverse in the last however many years. But I understand people now in their frame of reference and how they grew up and their background and the things that they've experienced. And once you start to understand that, it makes things a whole lot easier. Instead of being upset with somebody, you have to be like, oh, yeah, I get that from their point of view. I think it's just a maturity thing. I agree. I think <laughs> you it's start a, to see things that way. It, that's a huge one. But it, let's go back to the question in yes. terms of how do I start the conversation? Guess what? You just do it. <laughs> it's very hard. We got a call from somebody recently. And they were like, I don't know how to bring this up to my parents. And we kind of just said, like, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. They're going to be mad. They might not talk to you for three months, six months. They they, they just do that. I don't know what their deal is, but they <laughs> freaking do that crap to you to make them feel superior. Okay. You have to go through that. And I know it sucks. There are some of you who won't have to go through that. There's some of you who will start the conversation and your parents will be boom ready to go. They're like, okay, accepting. I, I'm, I'm down for this, but there's going to be those parents. Most of them, especially if they're Indian, they're going to be like, no, this is not happening. We're moving back to India <laughs> right now. We don't want this. See you later. They'll say that they won't because they don't have any plan to do that. Yeah. It takes a long time to move. You can't just make a decision just, and boom, you're gone. You can't just do that. So don't take it too hard. Like don't, don't like, don't take what they're going to say to heart because you kind of just have to go with the flow for a little bit. Well, the biggest thing is that when people are hurt, they say hurtful things, hurt people, hurt people. We've said that before, but it's the truth. And I've seen it so many times now when you start to realize that the people, when they're coming from a hurt place, they'll do anything to hurt you back, to make you feel that pain, to make you understand it. And yeah, misery loves company. The best way to make parents feel comfortable is just showing up. Uh, so one of the questions was, how, how did you convince your parents for marriage? The way that I made it to that point was I had Hallie with me all the time. Like she was there. <laughs> I mean, we just spend was, every second of our lives she, together. <laughs> she was always around. She came to family events. She like photographed our events sometimes. She was just there. She was always at our house. Like she would help. She wouldn't help me with homework, but I'd say that to make her come over. And then like because my, I'm smarter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we wanted and them so, to think that I'm not that um, I'm not as smart. I'm not anyways, I wasn't smarter. You know, I just had her around. So she got to interact with my parents more than usual, which helped create credibility. When you're trying to get a job, you want to create credibility. You want years of experience, right? You. I try to give Hallie the years of experience oh that were required gosh. for my parents. And so I did that. And then they were accepting, and then we got married. It was easy as that. Yeah, that's so easy, guys. That's how it happened. <laughs> so that's how I did it. And a lot of it had to do with my siblings as well. Like getting their support helped me use them as the overall support that I needed to convince my parents. Good job, Katie. Way to sum yeah. it up. 
You're welcome. That's that's a that's a lot. We get asked that a lot, but I think it's important that we address it. I know we address it a lot on this podcast, but we also have a lot of newbies coming, mm-hmm. and I think that's one source of information that people really want from us in our opinion and our experience with that right so i think it's important that we do address it every time and i'm happy that we did the question with our relationship um being affected by it me hiding this relationship from my parents was very hard on hallie because it feels like she's a secret it feels like she's i'm afraid to tell her about talk to her how do i say this how i was afraid to show her to the world is what I would kind of describe it as, right? Why am I not good enough to show them that we're together? Exactly. And so that hurt her a lot. And she said it multiple times. She's like, when are you going to tell him? When are you going to tell him? And I just like brush it off. It's like, I'll tell him. I'll tell him at some point, hoping that Hallie would forget. But that's so damaging just to brush it off like that. And I see that now as I've gotten older. The more you don't tackle things head on, the more damaging it's going to be. Yeah. And so we needed to fix that immediately. And we did. It was hard. It was tough. And that affected our relationship a ton, but it was for the better when we did tell him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it was just nice to have that weight lifted off of you for a little bit and just like, oh, I can finally not have to hide all my secrets. The thing with Indian kids, I know you, okay? You lie. So much to your parents, okay? I know you freaking lie, because I did it. I lied all the time. I lied way too much, and it's not good. They won't trust you, and when you lose the trust, they they just won't listen to you, okay? You need to build the trust with your parents. I know it's hard. It's very difficult, especially when they're yelling at you, but you got to try. And it made our relationship so much better after you told them. Yeah. It just got stronger and better. And then obviously we ended up getting engaged and married and now things are great. Look We're at all us besties. Now. Yeah. Look at us now. It just takes time and communication and open mindedness and time. <laughs> I next, think I already said that. <laughs> next question has to do with this social media journey that we've been on. What inspired you guys to start social media and start a podcast? Because of questions like the last ones. Yeah. Because you started to get big on TikTok and for it wasn't necessarily for our relationship, but sometimes it was. But yeah. because people started coming to your page and seeing that we we were together and you were posting a lot of wedding content at that time, people were so fascinated at how did you guys make this work? Yeah, I saw that. Uh, but it, going like all the way back, like I started making YouTube videos in 2013 was my first ever YouTube video. And I just like made stupid skits here and there. I loved video. Anything to do with video, I will 100% do it. I, It like fuels me. It is what my passion is in. I know that I can do it. And so that is when social media started to kind of take off. I know like Facebook 2007, that's kind of when social media was starting to go up and but then uh-huh. when Instagram but and TikTok and Twitter and all those things. When when I saw like Instagram pop up, that was huge because I love taking photos. Musically? Musically. Dude, was, you made stuff on there all I the time. I made so many Musical.ly's, it's not even funny. And then once I saw what was possible on YouTube, first of all, Casey Neistat, everybody knows Casey Neistat. If you're on YouTube, you know Casey Neistat. He just blew up and he was doing this thing called vlogging and i was like whoa that's kind of cool <laughs> revolutionary i can do this and so i tried it out so i did that for 2 years once he stopped so he stopped in like 2017 and then i started vlogging in 2018 mm-hmm. and it just taught me a lot and then in 2017 when Casey and i said stopped as well is when Hallie helped me start a business called Espatel Productions, which still exists today. If you want to check it out, it's on www.espatelproductions.com. It's great. But we have a video production company where we do all kinds of things, photography, videography, and that has helped a lot in, in the social growth. media journey. Yeah. When it comes to the podcast, it was literally we just had two DJI lavalier mics that we just picked up and we we're like let's talk about a relationship and see where it goes we see so many relationship podcasts and um i had never seen one that was an interracial couple i think i saw one maybe but an interracial couple that went through the exact same thing as us so i was like let's start it let's tell our story and boom this is where we are now it's actually it's very rewarding to see the people that are watching and asking questions and commenting and i think it's one of the best parts about making videos 
I agree. I think that building a community is definitely the best aspect of all of this. I mean, obviously, yeah, we like growing our stuff and like on TikTok, Instagram, whatever it may be. But I think overall growing community and we have a discord that we have a community of people, which you should definitely join that, by the way, link in bio. Um, it's fantastic. I love meeting mm -hmm. so many of the people we've met up with a lot of you guys. We've hung out in different states when we've gone on trips and traveling. We'll get chai together. We'll hang out or just be like, hey, you know, like it's the coolest yeah. thing because a lot of people are in similar situations to us. But then there are also people from the Indian community, people from the white community, people from the Asian community. Like we have so many people joining. We're building an army. Okay. Yeah. It's and called it's called the half past crew. The half past crew, baby. <laughs> and it's just, I think that's one of my favorite things because we've genuinely become friends with so many people in our community. And it's been, I think that's my biggest thing because I'm such a people person. And so just having that engagement with people and talking and just having a group of people that we can all be ourselves around, mm -hmm. it's its fantastic. It's good to surround yourself with people that are in similar situations as you because you have similar topics you can talk about and then you can help each other and get to where you want. And I think as far as, I mean, at least for the reason for me wanting to start social media, I genuinely have a love for content mm -hmm. creation. I'm good at it. I enjoy it. It's fun. I love being creative in that way. Um, whether it's making TikToks, taking, like doing any kind of photography gig, uh, having do us doing like photo sessions of ourselves and posting and doing the whole process of posting, whether it be on Instagram or TikTok. And I love making just content. I love yeah. it so much because... There's creating it that is the aspect for me that I love. And then also growing our pages. Mm -hmm. We have a great community of people that follow us that are excited that we when we post stuff that are like, oh, my gosh, this is awesome. And it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's my dream. I wish I could do it full time because it's I actually am good at it. I'm passionate about it. It comes easily to me, which I don't think to a lot of people it does. And I'm just, I, I love it. I love it so much. And that brings up a great point. One of the questions that was asked is, half past shot income? Yeah, <laughs> we're not making much off of this. It's not about the money. But eventually, I think it would be great to have a little bit more revenue. Uh, just so we're transparent, we usually get around 100,000 views, 140,000 views per month, okay? Yeah. From shorts and from shorts okay. and from the long form videos that we post or the podcasts that we post. So around 140,000 views. With that, <laughs> we make about a hundred bucks a month, everybody. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Thank you for watching and not skipping the ads sometimes. That helps us out a lot. Um, Which but, again, it's not about the money. It it's not at all. We love that we're building community and building something special. Eventually it will be nice to, you know, gain a sponsor of some kind. We have one called the Q&Club and Club, and they help out a lot. So if you want to use Hallie's promo code, Hallie25, and go to thecumanclub.com to get 25% off anything, make they sure you do that. They have some good stuff, you guys. Please go check it out. So that's just, that's just one way for us to continue growing this specific podcast. Uh, and one of the other questions was, how do you manage your personal life with content creation? <sighs> I'm not going to lie. It's hard. It's not it's easy. It's it's tough. There's a fine line of life and content creation, especially because we both have full-time jobs. So that's 40 hours a week there. Plus we're probably putting in another 40 hours a week on content creation and the podcast and our side business. So like this weekend, I, we have to film this podcast a little bit early because this weekend I have to film a wedding. And so it's a, it's a tough tough thing to manage because we don't usually get weekends anymore no so i can't remember the last time we had a weekend it's been about a year i mean we had out of the year we've had one weekend that was not uh, working <laughs> that that was not working which was a bachelor and bachelorette party that we got to go on which was fantastic turn off my brain for a weekend and yeah. it was just nice to not do anything it was and that is useful for us from time to time but if we're gonna make this work we're gonna have to put in the hours and put in the time which i'm so happy to do because yeah. again this is what i'm passionate about i love creating the content planning it posting it execution and then growing our community as well so for me it's such a huge blessing that we even get to do this because i enjoy it so much and if it does grow into something where it could be our full time then i don't even know <laughs> i would be so happy i don't even know how i would handle that on the day-to-day -day. i think i would just cry every day because i would be so happy that i'm doing this 
for real because that's what I, that's what I want. It, yeah. you know, but I'm not going to lie right now with the full time job with our social lives too. I mean, think about us taking time for ourselves, doing date nights, hanging out with friends, seeing our families, and then also the business and the podcast and all that that encapsulates. I mean, it's not easy. Okay. It's very hard. So K2 and I definitely struggle with how stressed out we get. And mm. sometimes it's really easy to take that out on the person that you're closest to, unfortunately. Especially and, the person that you're working with all the time. Yeah. And we hate that. Hey, <laughs> we work, we try and work on it as best we can, but yeah. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It is challenging sometimes, but we, at the end of the day, we love it and we wouldn't stop doing it. We don't want to stop doing this podcast. We don't want to stop the content creation because we're so invested in it. We just want to keep going and growing and getting more out of it. Yeah. Speaking of birth control. <laughs> that, <laughs> Do wow, we that's use so it? Related. I don't know. We're, I guess we'll find out in nine months. Um, hey, now. In terms of. Hold on. This was just a question that everybody asked. Okay. It was, there was three questions about birth control. Like, what is it? Like, do we use it? I don't know. Do I, that's I a use question, it? That's a question that mm. you got to ask Hallie. Yeah. I think uh, it is addressed to me, but. There is another question about how many children do we want? There's also a question about if we will care what religion our kids follow. Well, let me start the first two. Um, birth control. I've cycled throughout different kinds of birth control throughout the years. Currently, I am not on anything and I feel the best that I've ever felt in my whole life. So. For me, it didn't work. I get for other people if they want to take the pill or if they have an IUD, which is what I have experience with, but I will personally never, ever do either one of those ever again. Just want to reiterate that, ever. It made me into a very different person. It was just painful for me to have. I mean, like my cycles each month were just more painful to have. I just, mm -hmm. I never felt myself mentally. I was really struggling. And so for me personally, it did not work. But for other people, for other women, maybe it does, you know? That's... To, yeah, it's very specific to each individual. Kids, I want two. We'll see I, after I have one. <laughs> I want one because <laughs> no, no, no. This no, economy no. is insane. It's All okay right, two. Got to think statistically, and I just two kids is awesome. But in this economy, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna happen. Well, I mean, I'm 25. You're 26. Yeah. So we're not looking to we have, have children just yet because we still want to continue to take our stuff to the sky okay we're not there yet but um i want to i as if i can pick i would like a boy and a girl i haven't thought too much about having two boys or two girls or <laughs> yeah i guess that's yeah i don't know yeah that's a uh, it's a lot so that's the uh, that's those are our answers to that question in terms of the religion question i they're going to experience both okay that's just going to be the reality i've met a lot of people who are um who, who have two different religions and they have kids together and usually the kids just do both does that make sense mm -hmm. they the, the cultural aspect of the indian culture like that stuff is just going to be there like it's it's always like the the holidays and all those things and then the moral aspects of things are are going to be there in terms of what the teachings are in christianity and i think that's I think both of those things are good. I think, yeah. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about having hybrid babies, right? So, mm -hmm. K2, they're going to know all the things. Okay, how cool is that? I think it's really special because they'll be able to connect with other people in that situation, connect with both sides individually, but then other people who are like, oh, I have both backgrounds as well. And I just think it'll be a really beautiful thing as they continue to get older because they're going to celebrate both sides of things and traditions and... It's just going to be really special. I get really excited sometimes thinking about having babies yeah. and how we're going to raise them. And it's stressful, but I do get excited seeing other people's babies because I picture us in that situation. Like, yeah. oh, our babies are going to be so cute. It, it'll Hopefully be... Hopefully they won't have my fair skin. Oh, yeah. I really <laughs> hope they don't have to deal with sunburns. Uh, that would be nice. Sunburn. I don't know what that's like. As per last week where I got so sunburned, <laughs> it was just painful. Somebody also asked, Hallie, what is the most valuable thing that you learned from me? That's kind of a deep segue into that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I'll tell you what I've learned from you. Probably the biggest thing is to be more op open-minded mm. because I feel like I wasn't before. Hallie was super close-minded before she met not this brown super, man. Not super. Not super I think she had a um, narrow path of what she focused on. And then I broadened that path 
and was like, hey, stop looking down one path. You brought a lot of color into my life. A lot of special bright colors into my life. During Holy, I just threw all the colors at her and she was like, wow, I can see more openly now. Well, I mean, that's, I was trying to be sweet. (laughs) Um, Not necessarily that you threw colors on me and then that changed my perspective. No, I meant just in general, you opened up my eyes to obviously experiencing the Indian culture is huge. Like yeah. obviously it's known for being bright and colorful, yeah. right? So I think for me and I love, you know, I love my my faith and my culture growing up, but it's very uh just very traditional. It, I mean, that's like what a lot of yeah. people around here do, so I didn't really know a lot of people who had different backgrounds. And so especially like going to Garba for the first time. Why did I say it like that? Garba. Garba. <laughs> Sorry, said it wrong. That was bothering me. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, going there for the first time and dancing and seeing the different kinds of outfits that people wear and just the kind of fun that people have. Like, a lot of white people don't do that. <laughs> like, we don't just have big events with people because we're not as family-oriented. So I think that was another cool thing that really opened my eyes. I think you guys are family-oriented. It's a different kind of or- family-oriented. Yeah, and I'm think- not speaking for everybody, but me personally. Yeah, I think we have a ton of family friends way too yeah we don't (laughs) huge amount of family friends even if they're not family they're considered family (laughs) friends you know what i mean and so uh i think that's a definitely different the most valuable thing that i've learned from you hallie is to stop looking so far forward Mm. and like live in the moment i think a lot of us a lot of this is just something that i think has just been ingrained in my brain is to always think about what's next like never just be satisfied with what you have. That is something I still struggle with today. I, I'm always like, oh, I'm not satisfied with what I have. I have to go find the next best thing. And Hallie is very, she's awesome at look at look at this day and just live in this day. I don't care what happens tomorrow. Today is today, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, like Hallie's always so excited for date night and then she doesn't like, think about what's going to happen the next date night. She's like, oh, this is the date night. Like, I'm so excited for this specific date night. And I'm not going to think about anything but this date night. So in the moment. Whereas like me during a date night, I'll be like, hmm, what's going to happen like five years from now? And how are we going to make that work? Yeah. Like you literally bought a (laughs) Tesla and you like weren't, you were like really happy, but you weren't satisfied. And I remember like Kate asking you, Suketu, you bought your dream car. Why are you not satisfied right now? Why are you looking to what's next? Yeah. I don't you, know what what's you want the next me. Tesla that comes out in however many years? What? And so that's been one of the biggest things I've had to learn along the way is being present and focused in the moment because that's how I feel closer yeah. to somebody. That's how I feel closer to you. And we spend quality time together and we fully live in the moment and are there with each other and being very present that is what matters the most to me and that is how i feel close to close and connected to somebody and it's very important that you learn that lesson because otherwise you're just going to let life pass you by and then does anything have any meaning that's a really deep question to think about at 7 a.m in the morning on monday (laughs) does anything have any meaning nothing has meaning but i mean overall when i talk about thinking about five years in the past somebody just or five years into the future somebody also asked what are your both both of your short-term and long-term goals like next five years like what are your goals um and see like this is the kind of stuff that i love like i love thinking about where do i want to be in five years um and i've been thinking a lot about it and so for me short term goal is to continue what I am doing and be the best at it. So like being in my full time job and uh continuing on with this production company that we have started and, and conti- are continuing to grow. How can we continue to grow that? That's my short term goal is to continue the success route that we're on, okay? Same. And then long term goal for me is to be able to <laughs> is it, say it. It's to be able to not be it's okay, here. <laughs> <laughs> be, be, not like that. No, I don't want to die. I, okay. I don't want to be here. <laughs> not be in my current situation, which is wait. In, okay, what? Not my current. Like, listen. <laughs> I'm talking about like in Indiana. I want to do something. I want to. I want to experience another city just once in my life. It doesn't have to be like Indiana's never, never coming back. I want to always 
like I want to definitely have kids in Indiana. Definitely always have a, a you know, we're mm. our heart is in Indiana. Yeah, right? but like I would love to like experience a different city. That's five year goal. Like I I would love to do that within the next five years. I would also love to be able to get my. I would love to be able to get our company to a level that is self sustaining. If we can do that, <laughs> then I think it might it might help us uh, move on with what our passion is passions are. So I agree with you in terms of short term goals to continue the the success of our podcast and also our social media stuff. I also agree with trying a different city out. I would love that so mm-hmm. much just to get different experiences and try out a new place. I mean, why not? We're young. We're hot. <laughs> we're, I don't know about yeah. that one for myself, but. We're we're sexy. I don't know. <laughs> okay. You know what? Forget about it. We're, we're young and we're attractive and we're cool and we're fun. And why not? Why the heck not? Okay. I'm. I'm all about growing and getting so many new experiences. And this is part of the open-mindedness that you brought to me is that traveling is good. And I love it. I love going places. I want to travel to different states, to different countries. I want to go everywhere because we can. Yeah. Only if we can bring Sylvie. Oh. She's right there. She... I have a backpack for her. She will be coming. However, I just want to add on to that. I want to be doing what I'm passionate about, which is this. Mm-hmm full-time forever making a living out of it that is what i want and i'm much more there than you are in believing in myself yeah i know that i can make it work because i enjoy it and i love it and i'm passionate about it and i'm good at it the thing is we're so programmed to see success as making a lot of money and climbing the ladder staying loyal becoming the vp of this executive company that's amazing like that's like what you're taught right and like having a great 401k and all these things that at the end of the day are just a way to make you feel stuck and so and safe and complacent and if some people love that i am so here for you i i'm so happy that you love that that is not us i uh yeah i might i might not like that idea so that is our five-year goals. That is our short-term goals. I want to move into some of our guilty pleasure TV oh. shows. <laughs> okay. Mine is Owning Manhattan. I freaking love that show. That show just gets me motivated to live in the best place in the world. Okay, it's anyways. so dramatic and there's so much drama. I just love shows with drama. Mm. I haven't seen Love Island, but I'm going to watch it because I love drama. Love Island US. I've yeah. heard it's really good. Um, I love Gilmore Girls. I just put that on mm, as a, a comfort one. show. You, you've you literally never <laughs> watched it. Don't even. I guess in general, some of my comfort shows along with that are The Office, New Girl, Parks and Rec. I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Those are all good shows. Yeah. Hallie, do you believe in ghosts? Yes. You do? Yeah. I personally don't believe in ghosts just because I don't think it's possible that they can just be here. Otherwise, I feel like we would have seen one by now. And Ghost Hunters is Ooh. fake. It's fake. But I I think that there are supernatural things that can't happen. But See, that don't involve, that do not involve ghosts. I don't know. I've had an experience. I've had an encounter, mm. if you will. Yeah. You have? Yeah, and you didn't like it. You were I didn't mad. Like it. We were at this uh, lighthouse <laughs> Like ghost show thing. Ghost not ghost. No, tour. it's a ghost tour, not a show. It's a show. Okay. No. Screw. And they put like magnets everywhere that'll make it's it It's okay too. No, they don't. Listen, 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 Linda. Okay. So if you haven't heard of it, please look up the St. Augustine Lighthouse. St. Augustine, the town in Florida, I believe is the oldest town in the U.S. Correct me if I'm wrong. I really don't know. That's what I feel like they told me on the tour, um, but it's been some time. We went back in 2019. We've been a few times just because it's fun and because <laughs> it's a good time. Everybody has fun when we do it because they give yeah. you these little ghost meter, ghost readers, mm-hmm. meters, whatever they're called. And, you know, like the, it's it's pitch black. It's dark outside. It's late at night. So it's just kind of spooky. It's super fun. Fun to go with a big group because honestly, it's just kind of laughable. Some of the stories they tell like, oh, back last week, this lampshade moved and we 
realized it was John the spirit that was here. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that, you know, <laughs> it's very hokey. It is, is but we I love it. And I, I love it. And I'm down to always go back. However, there was one time we were in the basement and it was really dark and there's a man that has been seen with like a mm. captain suit on. Okay. I think he had a little crush on me. <laughs> Cause the ghost had a crush on me. It's a freaking ghost. But he is known to um, pinch young girls like on their shoulder and like brush their you hair. You felt that? Listen, just can you let me talk? Okay. You're so dramatic and you just have to mm-hmm. chime in every second. Um, so apparently the ghost likes, the captain likes uh, long brown hair. I have very long brown hair. And um, he just, uh, yeah, came over and I was talking to him. I don't remember his name, Sarge or Cap, Cap, maybe I called him. <laughs> Cap, are you there? I don't know. Um, anyways, I was talking to him. And my thing was going crazy. It was lighting up like crazy. Mm-hmm. And then um, the tour lady was like, oh man, he must really like you. You have, you match the kind of girl that he usually goes for. And I was like, what is that? What is my life right now? And then so K2 was like oddly jealous of the ghost. Yeah. He was like, are you kidding me? He got like all mad on this tour. <laughs> like, so K2, it's a ghost. It's not real. It's not real. You got so pressed about it though. It was so funny. And everybody was <laughs> just laughing. And so K2 was like all mad about yeah, it. Yeah, because it's messed up. <laughs> it's so Don't funny. touch my wife. <laughs> no, he wasn't, he's, he was passing through Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> what in the Why world? was my meter going off? Okay. Why was it? Hallie, cough your tea. <laughs> Come on. I think we know the answer to this one. Three, two, one. T. Tea. Uh, if this is our last question, we oh. have long questions for you guys. Those are, we have three long questions. They're going to go at the end of each episode that comes out right after this so yep. you gotta you gotta say to the end of all those episodes that are gonna be coming out we have some really great questions but the last one that was asked what if cheating was a mistake would you still divorce how on earth is cheating a what mistake if i'm just existing and a woman comes up to me and she's like and she starts kissing me if you kiss back then it's cheating okay then i then divorce and then, then divorce or I don't, you know. Okay, what? let's say I walk into a room and you're sitting on another guy's lap. That's yeah. cheating. That's a divorce immediately. Why would I do that? I don't know. Where are we at? Can you? What if you're accidentally scene? cheating? <laughs> accidentally sitting on <laughs> another person. I'm trying to think In of what different way mistakes. Would I literally? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of cheating mistakes. Like what are mistakes in cheating? Do you get what I'm saying? If you. In, if you start it, if you what if I, insinuate, like, text another girl. If you instigate, not insinuate. I keep getting those words mixed up. If you instigate the act, or if you engage in it after somebody else starts it, cheating. Interesting. Yeah. So texting. What texting? What texting another girl? You can text another girl in a more than friend way. If you're like. You want to meet up for lunch? Well, that's not cheating. If I said that to another girl. If you said, hey, babe, you want to meet up for lunch, you sexy bitch. (laughs) Then I'd be like, okay, then we have a problem. Yeah. No, I, 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 this question doesn't make any sense to me, to be honest. Uh, Cheating should never be a mistake. Cheating is wrong. Don't cheat. Don't be a low life. Don't do that. Okay. And that's, those are all the questions. That, that was fantastic. Had. Yeah. This, thank you for submitting these questions, everybody. We are at the very end of our episode. Our special announcement is, Hallie. One, join the Discord. <laughs> uh, I think there's a link. I think I said this link yes. in our description. If you're on YouTube yep. or bio on any of our social media sites, please join our Discord. Uh, we have a really great community and group of people that would love to introduce themselves to you and talk and have a good time. We send memes. We're just, we're just cool people. All right. So please join the discord because we are planning a very special discord call with everyone. So again, with the community aspect and meeting people and sharing stories and just having fun, having a good time on like a weekday night or weekend night, whenever 
we're going to have a Discord call and you can join, you can talk, we can have fun, we yep. can play games. Like we're going to probably come up with an agenda of like things we want to yeah. talk about or do. So it's a little bit organized. So it's not just like chaos, you know, because like Kate and I get really sidetracked sometimes and, and we don't want that to be what it is. All that information will be in the Discord. Yes. Once it's officially planned, because we started planning, once it's officially planned, we will announce the date in the Discord. We will give people some time. Um, so we're not springing it on them like the day of or the day before. Um, because we want to have a big talk with everybody. And I think that would be really fantastic. We're very excited. As a reminder, make sure you go to www.halfpastshot.com to submit your own questions and stories. We have questions at the end of every single episode. So make sure you submit those. Half Past Crew, we love you. We thank you for your support. And as always, we will see you next Monday at Half Past Shot. Thank you, everybody. Ah. Woo! Guess what? Sylvie's been so annoying this whole time, so I'm going to show you Sylvie. Oh, Sylvie. She's like, what's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? She literally, okay, if you guys ever hold Sylvie, which I don't know that you will, she feels like a cloud. She's a perfect little angel, and her mommy loves her so much. Huh. <sighs>